Walker, you're late again. Uh, yeah, 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 Sergeant, I, I know, Sergeant, but you see, I have the furthest to come. I don't care to hear excuses, Walker. But, sir, it is the duty of every member of the International Snowmobile Safety Patrol to be on time. Oh, I know that, Walker. But... If we may get on with this, Sergeant, if you please. Certainly, Inspector. Listen up, you men. The inspector would like to explain why you have been called to this meeting. Men, as you know, 95% of all snowmobile accidents are caused by faulty driver judgment. This morning, you are going to take a snowmobile safety test. The results will give you an indication of your chances of having an accident. Do your best, men. It will be your job to see that every snowmobiler in the country is tested. Thank you, Inspector. All right, men, listen up. Mark your answers on the back of the safety brochure which has been passed out. The questions will appear on the screen. You get ten points for each correct answer. Throughout the test, you will be given bonus points. Whacker, get the lights. No, uh, okay, Sarge. Roll, film projectionist. For nearly two million families, snowmobiling has become a way of winter life. Anytime you drive an off-the-road vehicle, you must be more aware, more prepared than you are in your automobile. If you have the following equipment on your snowmobile now, give yourself five points for each item. Extra spark plugs. Basic tool kit. Extra starter cord. Friction tape. A flashlight. A pocket knife. A rope. A compass. An extra drive belt. A first aid kit. Of course, having this material is not enough. You must also know how to use it. So give yourself another five points if you've read your owner's manual. If you have all the items, your card should look like this. Each of the following questions are multiple choice. Select the answer which is the most correct. Question number one. Who has the most accidents? A. The person with no experience. B. The person with less than 10 hours. C. The person with 10 to 20 hours. D. A rider with more than 20 hours. Again, which rider has the most accidents? Give yourself 10 points if you selected the most experienced rider. Far and away, the largest number of accidents happen to those who have been riding the longest. Question number two. Many accidents occur at the very start of a ride. Things go wrong when you least expect them. When first starting your machine, what's the most important safety precaution? A. Be sure your throttle is not sticking. B. Be sure your machine has sufficient gas. C. Check yourself for loose clothing. D. Point your machine toward an open area. Again, which of these is the most important safety precaution? A. Checking for a clear throttle. B. Having gas enough for your trip. C. Checking for loose clothing. D. Pointing your machine toward an open area. You should do all of these things, but the most important is A. Checking for a smooth, freely operating throttle should be as much a part of starting your machine as turning the key. Loose clothing is dangerous. A dangling scarf can get wrapped around the moving parts of your sled. Pointing your snowmobile toward an open area is only common sense. With all this completed, you're now ready to start. Not quite. This is bonus section two. A helmet and goggles are a part of common sense safety. Give yourself ten bonus points if you wear a helmet and goggles whenever you ride. Question number three. What type snowmobile accident results in the most injuries? A. Collision with cars. B. Collision with other snowmobiles. C. Collision with fixed objects. D. Collisions with trains.
Which causes the most injuries? Cars and trucks? Other snowmobiles? Fixed objects? Trains? The answer is A. Collision with cars and trucks. The most injury-causing accident in every section of the country occurs in this mismatch. Collisions with other snowmobiles are second, fixed objects third, and trains down the list. For most of us, it's hard to understand why any snowmobiler would want to tangle with a train. Now, here's how most train accidents occur. The driver sees a clear open path between the rails. There's nothing coming. When he sees a train, he'll turn off. And after all, he's only going to take a little shortcut. The problem isn't what's up front. It's what's sneaking up behind. Since operating snowmobiles around roads presents the greatest danger, every snowmobiler should take extreme care in crossing any paved or unpaved road. The safest procedure is no more than common sense. Look both ways and cross at a 90 degree angle. You should of course be familiar with local and state laws. And that's our fourth question. When does a cat have the right of way when crossing a highway? A. When the road is clear of visible traffic. B. When you post someone to direct traffic. C. On an unpaved road which crosses an approved snowmobile trail. D. None of the above. The answer is D. None of the above. You never have the right of way. In no state or province does the snowmobile ever have the right of way. Here is bonus section three. Five bonus points if you already know this technique. The snowmobile is designed to operate in snow, right? The skis control the direction of the machine as they push into and against the snow. On a hard surface, there's nothing for the skis to work against. The best way to direct your machine is to slide the back end in the direction you wish to go. If you think about what you're doing, your own common sense will usually be your best guide. Here's question number five. Which of the following items is the most frequent factor in snowmobile accidents? A. Excessive speed for conditions. B. Drinking. C. Operating in unfamiliar terrain. D. Night driving. One of these is a factor more than any other. Is it going too fast for conditions, drinking, operating in unfamiliar country, or driving at night? The answer is B, drinking. Every one of the answers can cause accidents. Excessive speed doesn't mean driving wide open. It goes like this. If you're going at 20 miles an hour, you're traveling at 29 feet per second. If it takes you four seconds to stop, you should be able to see every potential hazard 116 feet in front of your machine. If you cannot, you're overdriving your eyes. Your maximum speed at night is determined both by your headlights and the terrain. Your light should show you an obstacle 100 feet in front of you. If you cannot react in time to avoid that obstacle, you're overdriving your headlights. It really has nothing to do with whether you're going 20 miles an hour or 30 miles an hour. When you're overdriving your eyes or your headlights, you're speeding. Driving anytime requires a clear head and sound judgment. Drinking is the cause of more accidents than any other single factor. You get 10 points if you selected B as the answer, and give yourself 10 bonus points if you do not drink and operate your snowmobile. <laughs>